Hello, UCF. Thank you for joining us this morning. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you. And we're so happy. We're so excited that you're here with us. Now, have you been praying and fasting? Have you been taking part in our 20, 21 days of prayer and fasting? Now, this Wednesday, this coming new Wednesday, we're wrapping up our 20 day, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Something special about this is that every, every day from 12 to 1 p.m., we join together in our prayer on our UCF Online, UCF Online 1 and UCF Online 2. Post your prayer, post your prayer request, or else if you have nothing to say, just post your, your agreement with us. Amen is enough. But we want you to do one thing with us. Can you invite your friends? Can you invite your family members? Can you invite your buddies, your workmates, your, your, your sportmates, even those guys on your, your various other WhatsApp platforms? Can you join us in our 21 days in, of prayer and fasting? Not only that, right here in UCF, there's a lot going on. You can just take a walk here and come and see what the Lord is doing in our auditorium, what the Lord is doing in our, our gardens here. Come, come and feel fresh. Come and, come and, come and just fellowship. Come and, come and interact with a few people who are on ground here. But without wasting so, so much time, allow me and allow everyone here to welcome the, uh, the, the choir in our praise and worship. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome this Sunday. Worship with us. Hallelujah. Come on, let me see those hands. Holy, holy. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, some noise for Jesus. Come on. Woo. It's a good time. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Lord, you are good and your mercy and you are forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy and you are forever. So people from every nation, from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Sing hallelujah. 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 Father, we worship you for who you are. One more time we sing, we worship you this morning. We worship In our houses, in our cars, wherever we are. And the glory. Who you are. Yeah. Come on. Uh-huh. We sing together. Woo! He's a good guy. Lord, you are good. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy and you rest forever. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy. From every nation and time, from generation, say what we worship you. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we, we worship, worship we worship for who you are. He's a good God, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
tender mercy for your protection upon our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we sing that Lord, you are good and your mercy and you last forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy and you last forever. has given us victory in whatever we need. Amen. And we know who we are in him. Yeah. We are the chosen. We are sons and daughters. Yeah. Walking in 
Take a look at me, I'm a wonder Doesn't matter what you see now Gonna see his glory Both I know who I am Take a look at me, I'm a wonder hey. Doesn't matter what you see now Gonna see his glory Both I know who I am Take a look at me, I'm a wonder Jesus, let me hear you scream. Come on. Ah. Hey, hey. He has given us victory. There are dimension of his name. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. So nothing can scare you. Listen. Oh, the days of my life of praise. Everything that I have now, you give to me, Baba. For your love, Lord, I say I'm grateful. Cause you love me plenty, you came to die for me. Jehovah Nis, Jehovah Rapha. I am that I am. <laughs> A See, of such strong. No You're the lion of Judah. You're There's the no. Mighty, mighty Sing, I am. He has given me victory. Come on, 
see God has given me victory. He has given me victory. Sing. Hallelujah. The Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows and now I'm free. I got my food, hallelujah, food. I got my father, hallelujah, father. Listen. The house of Jesus, every day, na shakala, they do. Tell them. Da bolo, da bolo, heavenly blessing, na hima, they receive. Ah, hey, hey. Daddy, your place is my sister, right there, follow me. Thank you for your blessings upon our lives. And today, we stand as victors. We stand as victors over Corona. We stand as victors over COVID. We stand as victors over every other kind of disease and sickness and torment. Because we know that we are your own children. Because we know that we are loved by you. Thank you, Jesus. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. All his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always free. Oh 
Yesu Juya Yesu Dina mwe Chifo Zendi mwa Yes, undi wo, yes undi wo zena. Abandonya kavamuwe, zenga ne kwe se mu kwe munda. Yes undi wo, yes undi wo zena. Abandonya kavamu. Gane kwe se mu kwe mula Sundi uo Sundi uo Sundi uo zena Abando nyaka mamburwe Gane kwe se mu kwe Sundi uo Sundi uo Sundi uo Sundi uo zena Ndo woza zangezo na Siri kukwe Na njini bula mu Hebyen sibyo na biantama Ulika sena Zenjaya nilakwe Ulika losa kabula mu wange Yesu Okube ila woku Kanku gambe Diwo 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 Zena Eee Abandonya Kumangine chifungu nyumba yunga Nekwe se mukwezi Yesu Diwo Zena Mutima kwange Hebi ange vionna Vionna vivyo And what does it know? Yakazi Mule, Kuba Mani, Jemiki, Yakuba, Ganequa Semu Musaigo, Ganequa Semu Muquano Go, Ganequa Semu Chigamu, Kabamu, I 
Welcome to UCF. This is the day the Lord has made that we can rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy to connect with you again on this unique forum. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an amazing opportunity that we can connect together, even if we are scattered all over this city. Thank you so much, choir, for leading us this morning. Today is July the 18th. I think we are now close to the fifth Sunday in the lockdown. And I can imagine how many of us are wondering, when will this thing come to an end? But I want us to know, as we have been saying, every time God gives us this opportunity to come to you, that God is in control, God is hearing our prayer, God is watching over his children. And so be encouraged. This Sunday, July the 18th, be encouraged. And so from the comfort of your living room, whether under your veranda or in your car, whether you're standing on the main street of Kampala, wherever you are, welcome to UCF. I'm Pastor Micah, and on behalf of the team here, we want to welcome you. Shall we pray together as we go straight into God's word this morning? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. We come to you as your people who are in need of you, needy men and women, and we know that without you, it would be a different story. And so we don't take it for granted. Moments like this that we can draw together to commune together through your precious word. Would you speak to us? And whatever needs we are going through that needs to be met by you who is our God, we pray that you will come through for us. Whatever pain your children are going through, in, I pray this morning that you will reach out to them. Those who are anxious, those who do not know exactly how things are going to work out for them, and they're almost in a state of despair and panic, you see those people. God, would you reach out to them? Would you stretch your gracious hand towards them? We pray this morning for our country, Uganda, that, Lord, may your will be done. And we know that you are working even behind the scene. We pray for our leaders. Help them to make right decisions. We pray for the health workers who are handling all kinds of cases, especially in this pandemic season. May you encourage them. We pray for health facilities in the different parts of the country that seems to be overwhelmed with the cases of this dreadful pandemic, God, we pray that you'll grant them wisdom, that they'll be able to handle every patient rightly. And Lord, we thank you for what you are doing in our hearts. Even if we are scattered from one another, we know that you are working. And our hope, our trust is in you, who is our God. Would you help us to remain committed to you? Would you help us to love you even in the midst of all this uncertainty, that our love for you will not waver because you are our God. You are our protector. You are the one who provides. And so you know what is best for us. And so this morning we look to you in prayer. Would you come through for us? In our trust in you, we pray that we will depend more and more on you and not to give up and not to waver in our faith in you. And Lord, even right now as we turn to your word, would you speak to us? Let your word come clearly, and may we be changed, empowered to live for you, and to honor your name. In Jesus' name I pray, and if you're there, please join together and say amen, and amen, and amen. Welcome to our service this morning. We are continuing in our series on flourishing. We started with flourishing in adversity. We talked about flourishing through the lenses of culture and scriptures last Sunday, and today, I want us to narrow it carefully down. We want to talk about flourishing in the house of God. Flourishing in the house of God. And you're wondering to yourself, why are we on this particular 
topic. Why is it? Because I think there is something that God wants us to get even in this moment of adversity where we find ourselves not knowing what is going to happen. Still, God's demand over our life remains. God's demand over our lives remained. So what does it mean to flourish in the house of God? And I'm going to bring two key observations as we go into this topic. Number one, the importance of God's word, that you and I can never talk about flourishing if our life is not hinged, if our life is not rooted on God's word. You cannot talk about doing well. You cannot talk about abundant life. You cannot talk about flourishing if you are not rooted in God's word. Otherwise, you are going to be subscribing to the way the world sees things, to the way the world do things. God's word is very important in the life of a child of God. Without God's word, you and I are nothing. And my gut feeling is that for you and I to flourish in God's economy, in God's kingdom, in the house of God, you and I need to be people who are rooted in God's word. You need to be rooted in God's word. Let me repeat it again. You need to be rooted in God's word. You cannot get a well-paying job with all the admired benefits if you and I are not fit for that job. If you and I are not qualified for that job. Qualification comes as a result of experience, comes as a result of education. It comes as a result of you and I having proven ourselves that we can be entrusted with that responsibility. And that's why many of you are studying. You need to get some papers that can back you up in your pursuit of jobs. So those who know their God, the Bible talks about that, that they shall do exploit. My people perish because of ignorance. We said last Sunday, Jesus' own declaration is very, very powerful for us, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10 10 talks about that. Until you know something, you and I will forever remain a prisoner in our own world. And this day I want us to know that it's not because there is lack of opportunity, but lack of know-how or lack of knowledge that keeps many of us backward. If you do not know a thing about a thing, you're not going to be able to make it in the way you would want to. You need to be knowledgeable in life. You need to be knowledgeable in life. And part of the rampant poverty in this nation has so much to do with ignorance. Ignorance. I was watching news a few days ago that 70% of Uganda don't know exactly how the government works. They don't know where to get anything. 70% of the population, they don't know where to go for what. They don't know. And I think that is part of the cause of poverty. Most of our young people today, they know if you can ride a Boda Boda, then you can make it in the city of Kampala. Somebody said, what you do not know will deter or short circuit to your future. What you don't know will work negatively, will impact you negatively. And so it is very important for us to be well informed. It is important for you and I to know things, to know things. And many of us, I strongly believe, are being confronted with premature death. And this hinges greatly on ignorance. Greatly on many of us not knowing how we can even eat right. How we can drink right, not alcohol. Some of you are wasting your life on alcohol and you don't know that you are actually limiting your years that God would want you to live on this earth. Some of us, we cannot even take care of our body. Some of us, we have allowed ourselves to be indulged in all kinds of things that does not benefit us. Some of us don't know any limit. We don't have any restraint when it comes to eating right, when it comes to food. Avoiding fatty stuff are all part of longevity of life. And a fool is one who will say, who cares? And so knowledge is very important if you're going to make it in this world. And so even God invites us, God himself invites us as he gave that unique opportunity to the children of Israel, making a very bold invitation to them, saying in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 8, and I want us to read that Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. He says, come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sin are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. 
Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I like what the Life Application Bible says, that come, let us talk this over, says the Lord. No matter how deep the stain of your sin is, I can take it out and make you clean as freshly fallen snow. Even if you are stained as red as crimson, I can make you white as wool. If you will only let me help you, if you will only obey, then I will make you rich. In other words, I will make you flourish. Isaiah 1 verse 18 to 20 talks about that. And this morning, I want us to know that we don't have to go through life permanently soiled, permanently dirty, weak, marginalized, powerless, ignorant, wishy-washy. We can't just be gambling in life because God has a wonderful plan for everyone on this earth. He created us. Last Sunday we said that the earth and everything that is in it belongs to the Lord. God owns this world and it gives us that amazing opportunity to be stewards on this earth that he has given us freely. God has a plan and it's a plan of success. Good, wonderful plans for us to flourish. And through the word of God, through prayer, we can be assured that Christ has forgiven us of our worst sin and removed whatever stain sin has caused in our life. And you and I are free indeed to live life in its fullness so you and I can flourish. And so the issue of flourishing has not, to do necessarily with how much stuff you are acquiring. No, the issue of flourishing is, number one, to do with your relationship with God. And when our relationship with God is right, God takes care of so many things in our own personal life and in, even in our own lives. God does take responsibility. Isaiah 1, God is pleading with the children of Israel here. It has so much to do with learning to do right, learning to live right. Flourishing comes as a result of our willingness to doing what honors God. And God says it here in verse 20 of Isaiah 1. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. In other words, you will flourish. And maybe the question we need to ask ourselves this morning is, that when God speaks to us through his word, do we really listen? Do we hear God when God speaks to us? Are my people willing to obey? Are my people ready to get out of their own opinion, away to doing stuff according to their feelings? Are my people ready? And that is a question that we need to confront this morning. That do we hear God when he speaks to us through his word? And some of us are not going to hear God because we have already made up our mind. Part of flourishing is basically walking in obedience to what God is saying in his word. And this morning, are you walking in obedience before God? Are you obeying God? Are you obeying God? Until you and I can understand, until you and I can come to know what it is to be in God's house, until you and I know what it means to dwell in God's house, to live in God's house, to be a child in the house of God, and God being your daddy, hey, kiss goodbye to flourishing. Until you're rooted in God's word. Until you're regimenting all your life according to what God says in his, law, in, in his word, then chances are that Part of your flourishing is being dictated by what you see around you, by the condition and by the expectation of the world. And that's why we talked about they that are planted in the house of God. That you and I must be planted in the house of God. Then your flourishing comes. You need to be planted in God's house. Then out comes the flourishing in the courts of the Lord outside there. 
planted in the house of God. We talked about that like tree planted by the water, drawing its nutrients deep into the ground. That tree cannot but bear fruit all season because it is well rooted, it is well watered. So today, if there is so much dryness in your life, if there is so much dryness in your life, today, if there is so much chaos in your life, if there is so much restlessness, so much anxiety, if there is so much disconnect in your own personal life, chances are you are not well planted in the house of God. It also means your appetite for the things of God, for God himself is literally non-existent. Point me a tree that is flourishing and bearing fruits. I will point to you that that tree is well rooted, digging deep, getting its nutrient down from the ground and being watered well. And a child of God who is thriving is a child of God that is planted deep in the house of God. And planting ourselves deep in the house of God has got so much to do with what we do, with what God says in his word. Are you a student of God's word? Some people say, I love God, but I don't love to read his word. Then what kind of love is that? She disconnect. So one thing to have God's word, but what do you do with it? What do you do with God's word? Brings me to the second observation that I would want to bring before us this morning. You and I need to meditate on God's word. So we are going to talk about meditation. That is the second observation. Meditating on God's word. A great contributor to our walk with God has to do with meditating on God's word. Meditating on God's word. When we talk about meditation, meditation is being attentive to the word of God. Playing, paying close attention to what God is saying in his word. What is he saying in that book of Acts? Yesterday, the other day, a few people were studying from the book of Acts. What is it saying in the books of Acts? What is it saying in the gospel? It is you and I delighting ourselves in God to the point where our conscious focus is on his will and not on our own. Our conscious focus is on his truth and not on our speculation. Our conscious focus is on his way and not the ways of the world, not the way of scoffers. When you go to someone, he talks about that. Blessed is the man who does not stand in the counsel of the wicked or surrounds himself with mockers and scoffers. Someone talk about that. So when we talk about meditation, it has got to do also with reflection. You are reflecting on what God is saying in his word, meditating on God's law produces confidence. If you go to Psalm 119, you will find references about God's word and it is considered to be his law, his precepts. God's word is described as statutes. God's word is described as decrees, as commands. And so when we meditate, we are talking about you and I playing, paying close attention Attention, paying close attention to what God is saying in his word. It has got to do with seeking things that are above. Colossians 3 verse 1 talks about that. That since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. Not on earthly things, and oftentimes our mind are so taken up by things that goes around us in our world. The scripture says here, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. From verse 1 to 4 of Colossians chapter 3. But I want us to observe very keenly here, verse 2. Very powerful. That let heaven fill your thoughts. Don't spend your time worrying about things down here on earth. Hey, you should have as little desire for this world as a dead person does. Unfortunately, most of us, our time are taken up by the attraction that this world dangles every single day before us. That God's word does not take top priority in the lives of many of us. I want you to see this. 
The Christian's real home is where Christ lives. Our perspective on life here on earth must be different. And so if we are going to let heaven fill our thoughts, fill our mind, it means to look at life from God's perspective. And every time we look to God, the way he would want us to look to him, every time we look at our world through God's perspective, there is a different orientation about everything that concerns us. We are going to think differently. We are going to act differently. And this is the antidote to materialism. We gain a proper perspective on stuff that this world dangles before us, that consumes many of us, are things that are going to pass away any moment and that you and I cannot tie ourselves to what this world offers. A child of God resting, meditating on the word of God has a different perspective, different outlook to life. The more we see life around us, as God sees it, the more we live in harmony with him, we must not become too attached to what is only temporary. That's why Paul says to the church in Colossus, set your heart on things above. The second thing about meditation is that it is a unique way of renewing our mind. They said garbage in, garbage out. And many of us will struggle with what we allow to dwell in our mind. Most of us, our mind are filthy. We are not thinking things that are right according to Philippians 4.8. Most of us, we have allowed our mind to become the devil's wax store. Meditation is a unique way of renewing our mind. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2 talks about that. that therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourself, your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed to the standard of this world, but be ye renewed in your mind. Be renewed by the renewal of your mind. Renewing our mind brings illumination to our hearts. It brings the power of God and helps us to resist the pull to conform to the standard of this world. Renewing our mind transforms us and renews us by giving us greater weight to God's perspective of life. A changed mind changed by God's word is a mind that is set on pleasing God. What is the condition of your mind? What are you thinking? What do you allow in your mind? What do you allow your mind to dwell on. When you're in your room, maybe you're a single dude, and you're there locked in your room on your bed, what do you think about? The next progy? The girl that has messed you up? Let you down? For most guys, all they think about, they say, anyway, let me stop there. There is so much safety, ladies and gentlemen, in seeing the world from God's heaven's viewpoint. And when we do that, it is as a result of you and I intentionally allowing our mind to rest on things that are true, things that are just, things that are lovely, things that are right, things that are of good report. Philippians 4a talks about that. When we allow our mind to dwell on God, there is so much safety. So much safety. And that can only come when you and I are madly in love with God and His, and his, and his Word. And that's why if you are going to flourish, it must be anchored on God's word. But here is the disconnect. Too many worldly thinking Christians fills our peace today. And I'm sorry to admit that the worldly thinking pattern is almost taking over the church. It is endemic. Taking over the church. Somebody said, I look for the church in the world what did I find? I find the world in the church. And so we bring all the garbage of the world into our church setting. We bring the thinking of the world into the church setting. We bring the way the world handles issues and, and, and challenges. We bring it into our world where we are asking God to rule over us. It doesn't work that way. You cannot bring the world mindset into a godly environment. You cannot. You're not going to function. You're not going to go far. 
the worldly thinking is almost taking over the church. In a few moments, you're going to agree with me. On top of it, ladies and gentlemen, has got to do with issues regarding relationships. That when it comes to relationship, there is basically no biblical standard being followed today. No biblical standard. God's word is not being followed in any relationship that most of us find ourselves in. No standard being followed. Today, there are very few marriages taking place. And what is happening, cohabiting now is the fashion. Cohabiting now is the fashion. People have literally deleted biblical, godly standard that can guide them. Those cohabiting are the ones in the choir, in the ushers, and even Sunday school teachers. And just because Pastor Micah tolerates it does not mean God endorses it. Just because Christian leaders are tolerating this kind of environment filled with men and women who are not following any standard at all does not mean that God endorsed it. And just because the church is silent does not mean God is silent. And if you are there in such a relationship and you claim you really love Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you take that Jesus is the center of it all, hey, begin to put things right now. I want to plead with you as your leader. Begin to put things right now. Those of you who have been postponing doing the right thing to honor God and it has gone for years and you're still in that lifestyle, caught up in that lifestyle, hear me very clearly here. God, one of these days, is going to get even with you. There are very few marriages happening. What is happening in Kampala? When was the last mass wedding? The reason is because cohabiting is taking the scene and many young men and women are so comfortable in it. Please wash out, wash out, wash out, wash out. And by the way, some of you can even do it in a hurry right now in this COVID season. Just 10 people. Very lean budget. And you can get it done if your desire is to honor Jesus. Ten people, you're done. All you need is a pastor. A lance is place. And a few witnesses. And you're ready to go. And you have a clean conscience. It takes the lenses of God's word to pierce all the layers of excuses that many of us have accumulated Layers of our presuppositions and rationality, conviction, all must be laid bare before the Lord for sanity to really prevail in our lives. If we are going to embrace God's standard, we need to close our ears, close our eyes to how the world do their things. See what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any Double-edged sword, it penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. The word of God judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And this morning I want us to know that nothing before God is hidden. In all creation there is nothing that is hidden from the eyes of God. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom you and I must give account. And God sees those who are cohabiting. Yes, he sees you today. And today, if you are there and you have maintained your position and you have stuck your ground, that that is the style you'd want to embrace, I want you to know that you are incurring the wrath of God on you if you have refused to do the right thing. Are you there this morning? You'll give account to him. You're going to account to him for every relationship you are or have ever been part of. Everything before God is bare. The second hit list next to relationship is work-related issues. Work-related issues. And many of us, we literally go full board the way of the world in looking for jobs and running our businesses. We do things like the world does it. So there's no distinction between one who knows God and one who does not. We are doing things like the world. There's no Christian virtues, or should I say biblical standard affecting our dealings. The way of doing stuff like the world is so entrenched in our job pursuit. 
This is what I'm trying to say. We take shortcuts like everyone else. We take shortcuts. We lie. Left and right, there is lying going on. We pay money like any other person to get anything done, including even getting jobs. We pay money. And some of us, we lower our standards so low, so low to get things. We lower our standard. We add the zeros. We are so bold in adding the zeros. We leave our jackets on the chair and we go for kabozis at the expense of the company. How many of us are not doing that? Our attitude stinks. Our mannerism, zero. We are professional gossipers in the corridor of our corporate workplaces. What am I trying to say? Most of us, our character and our attitude literally stinks in the workplaces. Our testimony has been diluted because of our attitude, of our character, of our mannerism. Hebrews 4.13 says that God knows about everyone, everywhere. Hey, that should scare you, my friend. God knows because he sees you. Everything about us, as I said, is open before this God. Open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from him. And it is to him that we must explain all that we have done. There's going to be accountability one of these days. You think God is not reaching you right now? He has got his own way and it is on time. See this, nothing can be hidden from our God. God sees all we do and knows all we think, even when we are unaware of his presence, even when we try to hide from him. Listen to this, God knows it. You and I can have no secrets from him. We cannot hide any secrets from him. And remarkably, this God knows us intimately. He knows us in a deep, personal way. You cannot get away from his hand. You can't turn away from him. He's everywhere. You go left, he's there. You go right, he's there. You go north, God is there. Where can I escape from your presence? And he sees every person on planet Earth. Let's go back to our meditation. If you and I are going to flourish in God's house, we must know how to meditate on his word. And so why do we need to meditate? Number one, meditation is the top priority for us. When our heart faints within us, because we're in so much pain and despair, like this season of uncertainty, this season of lack, this season of not knowing what is going to happen next, not knowing where the next coin is going to come from. Ladies and gentlemen, meditating on God's word will keep you and I together, will keep you sane, will keep you sober, will keep you intact. Meditating on God's word will help you, will encourage you, will give you the guide, will give you the strength. The second thing is when doubt rises in our hearts, and stripping down every reason for hope. And all you're left with is fear. And you don't know exactly what the next day will bring. Meditating on God's word helps you. When you're so worked up, meditate on God's word. The word of God will calm your heart, will calm your anxiety, will help bring your high emotions down. God's word acts like medicine. God's word acts like medicine. Are you there and are you struggling from breaking free from sin? And you promise yourself over and over again, God, I want to honor you. God, I want to honor you. But the next moment you find yourself back again to where you have been making that resolution. Are there a sin pattern in your life that has bogged you down for now? For a long, long time, and you say to yourself, I don't know whether I will ever come out of this. Are you there and you find yourself literally a prisoner in your own body, no freedom, and you literally hate yourself? Meditating on God's word will lead you to encounter God in a deep and a very personal way. There is something about the word of God. There is something about men and women who create time 
to engage with God, to encounter God through his word. There is something about meditating on God's word. It is like medicine, as we have been saying. Something happens when you and I intentionally create that time to be with God in his word. But my biggest disconnect in all this, how do you meditate when you have got no clue what God's word is? And that is where the danger is for many of us. Many of us, we are surviving on what we hear from people like Pastor Micah. That is all. That is the only diet you know about God listening from the mouth of people like us or watching a few clips here and there from your smartphones. That is all. But to pick a Bible like this and spending time and sitting down and creating time with God and shooing each and everything that is coming from God's word like this, many of us don't do it. Many of us don't create time with this. We don't. And so how do you even meditate on God's word when you have got no clue what God's word is? You're only here. You only hear it read once in a while to you in church. Or you only hear about it in radio. This is what I'm talking about. You have not cultivated that personal relationship with God through his word. Please know this. That you cannot think about flourishing if your life is not anchored, if your life is not rooted on God's word. You cannot consider yourself planted in the house of God when God's word is not part of your making. So part of being planted in God's house takes you knowing this. God, and you know this God, and you know this God through his word, and knowing him deeply takes the aspect of meditation. Otherwise, you and I are just an escort. You're an escort brother or sister in God's economy. Yes, you're escorting others, and there's nothing going on for you. And today you can change that story by giving Jesus your heart. Today you can change the story by getting to know God in a personal way. Today you can change the story by starting to walk with God, by starting to learn his ways little by little as you embrace his word. The huge missing ingredients in most of our lives we call ourselves Christian is intimacy with God through his word. That is the most missing ingredient in many of our lives. God's word is missing. God's word is missing in the life of many. God's word, and not just God's word, but meditating on God's word is what contributes, is what sustains our flourishing in God's economy. They that are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. Planted people meditate on God's word. Planted people honor God. Planted people are excited about God. And that excitement springs forth from their love and commitment and devotion to God's word. Planted people embrace the word of God with all their heart. Planted people take time to know the mind of God. And the mind of God is contained in his word. The will of God is in his word. And pity the man who can say all the lingo but has got no attachment to this book. He is to be pitied. And most of us, we know the lingo because we are hearing it on the airwaves. But there is no intimacy between us and God because we are not rooted in his word. Planted people meditate on God's word. The word of God is the sure deal for flourishing. So if you think today I was going to come and talk to you about how you can make millions of shillings, they are all here. They are all here. He's the one who gives us the strength to make wealth. But how are you going to know how to make wealth if you have not familiarized yourself with God's will? How are you going to get out of poverty if you have detached yourself from God's word? How are you going to know how to relate well with one another, to love your husband, to love your wife, if you are not anchoring your whole life on this thing called the Bible? And I think time has come for us to seriously embrace God's word. Success is no success. If you are embracing the lingo of success, 
based on what the world says. And so if we are going to flourish in the house of the Lord, can we fall in love today afresh again with God through his word? And if you're there, and you know that God's word has not really taken center stage in your life. Ask God to forgive you. And make a resolve today before him that you are going to start meaning business, creating time, intentionally creating time to get to know God in a deep and personal way by studying his word. In this lockdown season, why don't you challenge yourself that you'll begin to read from the book of Genesis. Very good reading. And go to Exodus and keep moving through those Torah books, the five books, which is called the Pentateuch. Then you come to Ruth, Judges, Esther, and all those. It makes a good read, a good read. And if you find it so much, the information are too much, you can come to Psalm. Those of you who are suffering and you feel like God has turned his backs against you, go to the book of Job and walk through the path he took. Those of you who would want to compose songs, go to Psalms. Everything we need for life and godliness is contained in God's word. And today I want to encourage all of us UCFers, wherever you are, can we fall afresh again, madly in love again with God through his word. Wherever you are in this lockdown season, challenge yourself that I'm going to start reading God's word. And if we are going to be talking about flourishing, our flourishing must be based, must be anchored on God's word. And can you please begin to start doing that on an individual basis and watch and see what God will do in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for speaking to us today. Most of us, we have become expert, almost like parrots. We parrot everything we hear. But we don't take the time to discover it for ourselves in your word. That's why many of us, our testimony are wanting. Because we have never aligned our lives fully with what you are saying through your word. Bring us back to loving you from a very informed position. And the informed position is us getting back to your word. Your word have we hid in our hearts that we may not sin against you. And so this morning we pray that you will help us to cultivate a huge appetite for your precious word, the Bible. And Father, thank you that you are working in us. Thank you that you are enlightening us. And help us to be able to stand on our two feet with boldness. Begin to embrace your word wholeheartedly. And whatever needs are there, represented by your people, wherever they are, may your blessings and may your hand of protection locate them. Lord, would you do your work in our hearts today. Help us to love you and help us to love your word. Thank you for speaking to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you're there, please join together with me and say amen and amen and amen. And may the Lord bless you quickly. Before we wrap up our service, let me remind you and let me encourage you to continue to pray. We are going to be wrapping up our 21 day of prayer and fasting on Wednesday. And I want to appreciate those of you who have been praying and also cutting food from your schedule. May the Lord bless you so much. And if you're there, please give yourself a high five because the Lord sees you. And if you have been dodging, the Lord also sees you. Amen. Amen. God watches us. Let your yes always be yes and your no, no. And so those of you who have been following and those of you who have been joining on UCF Online 1 and UCF Online 2 in times of prayer, I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you. Please join us for the remaining six days. Please join us. Come on UCF Online. Come on UCF Online 1 and Online 2. Every noon to 1 p.m. we pray there. Post your prayers there. Join those who are praying. Agree with them. If you don't have any words to type, just say amen and we will agree with you, okay? Can we do that? Let us wrap it in style. And so Wednesday this coming week, we'll be closing our 21 day of prayer and fasting and trusting God to open a new chapter in what we strongly believe God is ushering us into as a church. And so I want to also encourage you 
not to forget about your responsibility. Planted people, they give and they give generously. Planted men and women in the house of the Lord, they walk in obedience. And so today I want to encourage you again, please support the work of God here in UCM. Behind us here in the auditorium, we are working so hard so that as we come to the month of December, should things work out well for the country and we are back to where we have been, that we can be able to celebrate what God has done in the life of his work here in UCF. So we want to encourage you to support what God is doing here. Please, for your giving, kindly send your tithe or offertory to the MTN number that is being put right now on the screen. But for those of you who are hearing, the number is 0784-364-208. That is MTN mobile number. Let me repeat it again. 0784-364-208. And then on Airtel, 0759-710-220. Let me repeat it again. On Airtel mobile number is 0759-710-220. And then if you want to make a direct deposit into our DFCU account, this is what you need to do. University Community Fellowship, that's the name of the account. And the number is 0136357441 Let me repeat it again. DFCU Bank, University Community Fellowship, account number 0136357441 This morning, I want to say that from all of us here at UCF, we want you to know that we love you and we are praying for you. So join us as we wrap up our three weeks of prayer and fasting. Join us between noon and one every single day until Wednesday when we will end it up. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for being part of our service today. Thank you, the choir. Thank you, media team. Thank you, sound people. May the Lord bless you. And we celebrate what God is doing even in the midst of this lockdown. Life is going on here at UCF. God bless you and thank you for being part of our service today. Blessings. I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow And winds tossed in the ocean Vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling You told me who to our YouTube channel. Please like, comment, and share with your friends. God bless you.